How's it going everyone? This is Griff Dog here, and welcome to the very first episode of Griff Talks. What is Griff Talks? Well, it is a new show on my channel that is dedicated to NASCAR. Talk about NASCAR news, discuss any controversial things that have happened in NASCAR, throw my opinions out, and NASCAR theories. It is a weekly show dedicated to nothing but NASCAR. This is how the layout is going to go for this show. I start off every show by replying to five comments from the previous episode of Griff Talks. However, I'm not going to do that with this episode because there is not an episode of Griff Talks episode zero yet. After replying to your comments, I'm going to then talk and elaborate a little bit more about different news stories that have come up from the NASCAR world from the previous week. And then I'd throw my opinions on there and discuss what this means for the future of NASCAR as a whole. The third part then will be kind of a special part where I will kind of either go on a tangent on one of the news stories, I express my opinion on something, I talk about one of the theories that would be going up. So like I've heard people talk about like what if Spingate didn't happen, what if Joey Logano didn't go to uh, Penske. I will t m maybe talk about those. I will also even throw in some of the shorter Intertoss 3 shorts into these episodes. Because I know there are some shorts that are like two, three minutes long. So instead of having them being their own videos, what I will do is I will implement those shorts into part three of the weekly show. And then the final part that I'll do just as a t to end on a happier note is we will have a diecast of the week. Now, as you know, I have about 500 164 scale die casts in my collection. So once a week, you will see a totally different die cast from my collection. As of right now, I plan to release an episode every Monday. And I reason for Monday is because that's usually that down day and it's like, oh, I have to go to work or oh, I have to go to school. Well, the reason then is I'll have the episode up on Monday, so you're gonna have that little ray of sunshine to look forward to at to start your week. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the NASCAR news that's been that's happened not just this past week, but during the off season. Now I'm not going to go too deep into any of these, just simply because these stories have been running around the social media atmosphere for a while now, and you guys, for the most part, understand what's been going on so far. So with that being said. Let's get right into it. Monster Energy is indeed the new premier sponsor of NASCAR, replacing Sprint, which has been the company for 14 years. NASCAR, as well as Monster Energy, have a brand new look that will be established in 2017. Also, it is confirmed that Matt Benedetto is leaving BK Racing to go over to Go Fast Racing in the 32 for the full season in 2017. Greg Biffle has officially left Roush Racing. As of right now, he does not have a ride. Hopefully, in the upcoming episodes, we will announce his new ride soon. In the meantime, we have a bunch of charter swaps, including Biffle's charger being sold over to JDD Daughtery Racing. As a second team, Chris Busher moves over from the 34 ride at Front Row Motorsports to the new number 37 GDD Daughtery Racing Chevrolet. There has been no official announcement of a sponsorship yet. We'll announce that up in the upcoming and later episode. H. Scott Motorsports closes down. The 15 charter goes over to Premium Motorsports. The 46 charter that was leased from Premium Motorsports is sold to a second furniture row racing Toyota. That Toyota being driven by Eric Jones, and that's the sponsor of that car, is 5 Hour Energy. The 32 charter goes over to the 21 car to guarantee that their charter isn't the worst charter in three consecutive years. The 32 then gets a charter from the 44 team, which was driven by Brian Scott, but he retired. And so because of that, RPM Motorsports is shrinking down to one team. We have a new name for the Sprint Unlimited. It is now called The Clash. I find it cool because it has a retro name, but I also find it interesting because there is no sponsor attached to that race. Joey Gase is confirmed to drive in three races in the new in the 23 car, including the Daytona 500. And it is confirmed that there is indeed a smaller spoiler coming to the Xfinity Series next year, which I am totally hyped for just because... Now the racing is going back into the driver's hands. I do have two other news announcements and they are more talking about myself. First of all, as a self promo, I will have my first NR2003 video up at the end of this week. And it is a new series that I'm gonna start. And it's called the 10 Winners Challenge. So you guys ever watch a Green White Trigger and you're like, oh, I wish Kyle Larson won. Oh, I wish Chase Elliott won. Or, oh, I wish Kyle Busch won. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take several green white checkers from over the years and I'll pretty much do a redux of them. But there is a twist. I'm going to do it 10 different times. And the best part, we will have 10 different winners in this video. And so just to kind of as a pilot to this little series, um, this first one is not, it's not going to be relevant to the actual current NASCAR universe. And so what we have is we have the 2012 Kentucky race. And so in real life that race did not go green white checkered, but in this one it does. So here you see the starting flying up in front of you, and what will happen is we got a green white checkered, and I'm going to replay it 10 times, and in this field we'll have 10 different winners. At the end you guys will then vote on which one is your favorite, and you guys can discuss like which one is your favorite and why. So be prepared to see that on Friday. The other news is that I've kept this one a little quiet, but I do have a second channel. It is called Griff Dog 2. Clever, I know. So the point of this channel is more or less a throwaway channel. It is it has for the most part two meanings. The first meaning is um, if in case the original channel shuts down, this will be my backup. And I'll start putting stuff on there. But for right now, as you guys know, for the most part, I am an artist, and I create other videos. And I know you guys have seen, like, I've created this, and this, and that. But I know for the most part, not many of you enjoy seeing those videos. If you guys would like to support me in my other videos, it is going to be on that channel. I'll leave the subscription tab right here. Oh, and I'll also leave it in the description down below. So if it seems like I'm losing videos on my main channel, it's because I am slowly but surely moving all of the non-NASCAR videos over to this channel. So now the third part, the special part, if you will, that I'm going to talk about is mainly why am I doing this show? So to start this part off, you know how the beginning of your first college class or the beginning of your first high school class, you have that syllabus day? where they give you a sheet and it's like, they give you the lay of the land of what the class is going to be like. Well, that's what this episode is. It's unfortunately, it's not really much discussion based. It's more just informing you on what is to come of not just this series, but this channel as a whole. So with that being said, I will let you know why I am doing this show. First of all, I got inspired. There are four other YouTubers that I watch that inspire me to create like this little commentary show. Those four being Philip DeFranco, Boogie2988, Double E Dud, my apologies if that's not how it's pronounced, and Real Radman. The reason why Philip DeFranco is because I love the setup of his shows. I love the way how he jump cuts and I love the way how he really reaches out to the audience. Because not just is his show like a news show, it also is a discussion show, an opinion show, and he reaches out to the audience, you guys, and he asks the questions that I try to answer too. Like, for example, like in this one, like, what do you think of the new NASCAR logo? What do you think of the new direction NASCAR is attempting to go? Will it work? Will it not? Who knows? I also got inspiration from Boogie2988 because I really enjoy his uh, positive outlook on life. Like he definitely tries to be that positive inspiration on all of his episodes and I greatly appreciate that. And sometimes just the way how I talk it doesn't come off as a positive, it sounds positive, but I'm trying. I'm trying to get that out there. I really enjoy Boogie29's just positive inspiration and I want to take that in so that I push it out to you guys. So that you guys can get them positive vibes. Ugh. I also got inspiration from Double E D U D. I'm really sorry if that's not how you sit, pronounce your name, your YouTube channel name. As you may know, Eric, that's his first name. He started his first semester of college. Congrats to him, by the way. And so during his time at college, he, during his time at his dorm, has a little show, kind of like what I'm doing. Except he talks about the chase, he talks about chase predictions, he talks about who's going to win, who's not going to do so well. It is really interesting because it, like, again, sets that up and steps out and has a more, like, discussion-based. And again, it's because it's all about the NASCAR setup. 
and I greatly appreciate that, and I want to continue that on. I don't know if Eric's going to continue the show or not, but I hope he does, because he did an excellent job with it. And finally, I got inspiration from Real Radman. I like to believe Real Radman was a newer YouTube YouTuber, because I haven't really seen or known of him until earlier this year. But the reason why I like him is because of how straight up his opinions are on NASCAR, and more specifically NASCAR Heat Evolution. Like he doesn't hold anything back, he speaks his opinion without holding back. And I wish I could do the same. Now again, I'm still trying to be that positive guy, but at the same time, if there's something that is wrong, I want to like not be as afraid to point that out. But it's like, even though it's, I mean, it might be a bad thing, it's good to point that out so that you can work on it and make it good, whatever that is. And so I really appreciate Real Radman on the way how he goes about those sort of things. So yeah, because of those four, this little shindig is starting. So the second reason why I'm doing this is because NASA's target audience now is the younger audience. A lot of people know already that the younger audience isn't really going to television now to get their NASCAR fill. They're coming to social media. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram is kind of their mainstay for news. And so instead of watching NASCAR America or NASCAR Race Hub, they'll come and watch either WE Dud or... I don't really know if there's any other commentary channels out there. If there are any like really like na other NASCAR like content that do discuss news, please write it down in the comments down below. I'm actually kind of curious to see if there really is another channel that is dedicated to NASCAR news. And that's kind of a reason why I'm starting this up is because since I don't know if there's any other channels, why not start one up? And we'll see where this goes. Another reason why is because we need one solid platform to keep you up with all the changes that have constantly been happening in the NASCAR universe. Because if you look in the past 10 years, NASCAR is a whole different animal. Different car body, different way of racing, and we have so many new drivers now making their appearance in the top premiere series. And so I want to take the show to help move it along and keep you informed on what's to come and whether there will be either a positive or a negative aspect of NASCAR in the future. The fourth reason why is simply put more content on this channel. I'm pretty sure most of you guys don't like the fact how back in the day it would be almost a month before you see a new video from me. My goal for this channel is to not have that and to have it at least once a week have a video up. And so if not, what I also am going to do is my social media platforms, I'm a lot more active on those. So please follow and like each of those and you will get all the social media spills from there. And what I'll also do too is I'll usually get like immediate reactions to upcoming news. Like for example, if Great Biffle gets a ride, you'll look on the social media platforms and that is where my initial reaction will be. Then the upcoming Monday, then I'll elaborate more on it and get my take on whatever happens, i.e. when slash if Greg Biffle gets a ride. So to end this first episode, let's look at the first diecast of the week. And this diecast is, I would probably say, my most, at least one of my most favorite pain schemes of all time. Let's take a look. All right, so the very first diecast of the week is Elliot Sadler's 2003 primary pin scheme that he drove in the Winston Cup Series. This is the first car that Elliot drove for Robert Yates Racing. He drove with the Wood Brothers beforehand, and now he's here. What I absolutely love about this diecast is that he took the same number font as Ken Schrader when he drove the 36 M&M's car earlier in 2002. He took the same number five except turned a six into an eight, but then he kept a lot of stuff the same, like the red M&M. It's a little bigger than the 2002 car, but it is still there and just absolutely ginormous. Then you got the green M&M here on the side, also really big, and I just love how like the brown, the brown just rips right into the yellow. And you see how the M&Ms kind of just go on in. I don't know, there's just something about the number font that really intrigues me. 
And so this car was a 2003, but I did get it in 2009 off of eBay. And as you can tell, I love the yellow m and in the back because he has all the bandages on the back because it's like, oh, don't bump me. Ha. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. But so, yeah, this is without a doubt one of my most favorite paint schemes ever. And I'm really glad I have it. This car did premiere one of my stop motion races. I believe it was the 2009 shootout. So yeah, if you want to see this car in stop motion action, you can definitely do so in that video. So yeah, this is my favorite die cast, and uh, yeah, it is a very beautiful piece of art. So that'll wrap things up here for this very first episode of Griff Talks. Thank you guys for the support. I hope to keep this up. Be sure to look out for the second episode next Monday. Be sure to look out for the first Intertasa 3 video this Friday. Be sure to follow all of my social media platforms. And again, thank you guys so much for the support. I am super excited for 2017. Thank you guys for all the support. It's always been greatly appreciated. And as always, I will see you next time.